Will a Mark 1 Fabio VRS engine fit into a more modern Audi A1? Let's find out. So, why an Audi A1 um, and why a VRS engine? Two things. I originally was going to do it into a Lupo. I've done a couple of conversions with the uh, PD engines into Lupos. Um, however, going on marketplace, dealing with kind of the people that have Lupos, and also they're all kind of old and rusty now. Uh, it just kind of put a big X in that kind of plan. So, Audi A1 is kind of the next cool looking hot hatch. The only issue is obviously the Audi A1 is a newer platform, it doesn't share all the bits of the Mark IV platform. Um, so, I'm going to hit trouble with probably mounting it, probably shafts, um, wiring, basically, probably all the problems. Um, but on the plus side, the Audi A1 looks a lot cooler. Um, and the PD engines are a lot better than what's in the Audi A1s at the moment, obviously TDIs. Um, they don't suffer the injector problems, they don't suffer um, oil starvation. They do have the chocolate camshaft um, thing, if you know, you know, kind of it's an old school thing. Um, however, my engine's a really good engine, um, it's been to the Nürburgring, it's had a load of work done to it. Hybrid turbo, um, 6 speed box, kind of all the bits you kind of want on it, PD 150 head bolts. Um, so yeah, it's ready to go in. Kind of, this is the engine. We're gonna get on to see what the car is going into. So it's time to get this in as far as I can and rag the engine out. was quite painless to be honest, although there's a lot of wiring, so most of the stuff I've took out, the things that ain't connected, I've basically wrote what they are. I'm kind of hoping I can run the Fabia ECU on its own as like a standalone engine loom, that's kind of the, the way I'm going, um, but obviously I need to then disconnect a lot of stuff I'm not using in the Audi A1. So, I'm going to go in, I'm going to have a cup of water, because uh, that's how I rolled. And then I'm going to look at getting the exhaust off, maybe just getting a couple of mounts out of the way and then we're going to chuck the VRS engine in. Um, well, I attempt to because I don't think it's going to fit, but we'll see. <laughs> to have to make custom mounts and custom drive shafts however that doesn't seem to be the case so we're in we've got the engine mounted and we've also got the wheels back on the car and the car is on the deck so it's a it's a pretty mad one to be honest so the chassis uh, version of the a1 is a lot newer than the fabio vrs now the reason i'm putting an older engine in is because it's much better the fabio vrs engine is a bulletproof engine once the cam kind of shaft's been replaced after so many thousand miles because they, they had some that had defects in the cam. The rest of it, you, you literally can't blow them up. You can drive them on the limit all day long and you, they're just indestructible. And the famous saying is, oh yeah, they pull like a train. Um, they're a wicked, wicked engine. Whereas the engine originally in the A1 is a load of pish. And I plan to keep this car long term. So I like the look of the A1 and I also love this engine. So it's in there but basically what I wasn't expecting and I've done like a lot of research I've done probably like two weeks looking um, trying to find if anyone's done this conversion couldn't find anything online couldn't find a Zam thing and I don't know why I couldn't because this is such a simple conversion so this might be the world's first um, although I'm sure someone will drop in the comments that their kind of dad's neighbours friends got a cousin that knows someone three doors down that went to school with someone else that knows someone that's done one because that is always the same whenever anything like this is done 
However, as far as I'm aware, it is the first. So it's also extremely simple, and I'm gonna tell you why. What it needs is basically just Fabio engine mounts. It fits in Fabio engine mounts. Drive shafts, Fabio drive shaft. So we've got the six speed shafts in, um, they've bolted up. Now they are, one of them's a bit tight and uh, it's not fully tight. I, I should explain it. Once it's, when it's on full droop, you can't really move the shaft, but obviously when it settles on the floor, there's a bit of movement, which is what you need on drive shafts. Um, checking lock to lock, it's the same. However, if I needed to buy the spacers that basically sit on the diff side, um, you can buy some machine billet spacers, which I think are about 10 mil. It would, it would be perfect either way. It would give me a lot more movement, which is something I may do. I'm going to try it lock to lock and I'm going to have a little drive around and see if it feels like it needs doing. I personally don't think it does. I think it works as it is, but it's just worth checking. So I'll update the, uh, the video or the next video um, with regard to that. But worst case, it's a 50 pound kind of little kind of machine shim or a pair of them with longer hardware. Um, so that's it. It means I don't need to run custom shafts, which is a bonus because I've now got to worry about kind of cut and shut shafts potentially breaking or having a mix of different inner and outer CVs and being like, oh, I can't remember what part I need. It's literally just all dropped in on Fabio stuff. So extremely, extremely easy conversion. I will suspect there'll be a lot more of these done. Um, with regards to that as well, if you're, people are doing the 1.8 turbos out of like the Audi TT, all you need is the Fabio drive shafts and the Fabio um, engine mounts. You will need the bits that bolt onto the gearbox as well. Um, and obviously the metal work that fits over the cam, cam belt cover. Um, uh, be with me in a minute. Um, because I don't know whether they're different. It might be worth just checking your part numbers. Um, but obviously I do know that those will bolt to a 1.8 turbo engine. Um, because the blocks are the same, castings are the same, bolt holes in the same places. And obviously the O2M is the same. So... On buzzing, it's gone in. It's gone in without welding. It's gone in on kind of OEM mounts. Um, it fits really well. There's clearance all around the subframe. Now it is a bit awkward to get the engine in. You've got to kind of um, lift it up and over the subframe and then backwards. Um, but once you've done that, kind of the tip I would give anyone doing it is uh, put the bottom mount in first, which is unusual. Put the bottom mount in first, and then you've got your cam belt side mount, and then obviously the gearbox mount because that gearbox mount's pain in the back side um, because it, the way it sits on the chassis rail lip. If you're doing it, you'll know what I mean. Um, but yeah, it is all original mounts. So the plan now is to remove this. I, I want to jet wash all kind of the grease and stuff off the older engine um, because I didn't bother doing that. I just took the Fabius straight to the ring. Um, and didn't kind of give any kind of TLC to the engine other than obviously oils and service and stuff. I'm going to chuck a cam belt in. We're waiting for Vibertechnics mounts to, to, to come so I can put it back in. And it's a case of just custom exhaust, custom intercooler, pipe work. Um, and then it's going to be the nightmare job of wiring. Um, which I do think that is going to be a pain to be honest. But yeah, once I get onto that, I'm going to update the video. Um, I just wanted to put a video out there so people know that... Um, Obviously, it kind of fits. Um, so yeah, buzzing. Let's uh, let's all get this kind of engine back out so we can do the uh, the TLC kind of side to it. Again, get it back in to do the heart bit. <laughs> 